when I first uh, approached this book, I had in mind certain expectations of my own, uh, despite uh, uh, the fact that uh, when you uh, uh, approach a text in order to review it, there should be a certain amount of objectivity involved. I cannot help but admit that as a theatre lover and a person who has uh, keenly uh, followed uh, uh, the, the work of uh, Mr. Namel Viramuni in terms of uh, his uh, ideas and his expressions about theatre, I had certain expectations of my own as a reader to begin with. After all, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not uh, unjust to say that uh, when uh, a reviewer approaches a text, there is also that element of the reader in him who has certain expectations. So uh, my first, uh, first of all, my expectation was that this uh, work would turn out to be one that gives uh, hopefully uh, uh, a substantial amount of the wealth of knowledge that uh, Namil certainly uh, possesses on the subject of theatre, not only as a practitioner, but also as a person who is embedded with the, uh, with the metal of scholarship when it comes to theatre. because. After all, there is, is I believe, a certain uh, uh, degree of uh, differentiation when it comes to the approach uh, of uh, inter interpreting uh, uh, the ideas they bear about theatre from the point of a practitioner as well as a scholar or an academic. So coming from the background that he does, from, uh, from uh, uh, the hallowed halls of uh, Pera, then you're from the good old, uh, grand old days, which we've heard so much about from uh, uh, the generations that come before us, uh, I was hoping that there would be uh, hopefully uh, uh, an acute uh, analysis of what theatre means to him in terms of giving it the life that he found in theatre. So with that, uh, with that expectation in mind, when I approached the book, I saw that this work had, uh, had a scope which goes beyond only focusing on the subject of theatre, although I think it is fair to say that uh, the image of Namel Viramuni, to a great extent, rests on his uh, image or his reputation as a theatre practitioner. So that being said, what I found in relation to theatre was certainly uh, something that was of uh, reminiscence as well as documentation. And I think that's very important, especially when you look at how uh, future generations uh, in Sri Lanka will find a greater uh, variety and a greater volume of theater being produced in Sri Lanka. There's no doubt, I think, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's more than evident when you look at the robust theater culture that's uh, unfolding in Sri Lanka. There's a greater number of uh, uh, practitioners now coming up with a greater variety in theater. Now, if we are to look back and think as to how Sri Lanka's uh, roots in theatre, as uh, especially in, in, in the post-independence era, took off, I think it's, it's, it's certainly justifiable to say that uh, people uh, such as Namil Veeramuni and his generation play a pivotal role for us uh, to understand as to how the theatre culture in Sri Lanka developed. So in the book, you find uh, snippets, vignettes, and uh, 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 a little... Uh, elements of how theatre shaped Namil Veeramuni. But before going into extensive, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I won't go into extensive details only, but uh, before uh, going further on that line, I'd like to give you my impressions of how I first encountered and the first impressions that I got about this book as a text. Now, being an autobiography, the start of it is rather dramatic. It almost reads as fiction. There is the clear voice of the storyteller in the book that comes out. And one has to wonder whether, whether it's actually Namel Veeramuni, the person who is living that moment, or whether it's Namel Veeramuni, a person who's take, taken a third perspective, who's looking back on life, even perhaps, uh, uh, even ha perhaps from a perspective that doesn't really uh, uh, include him, or rather whether he's taken uh, another perspective where he himself is looking at his own childhood from the, uh, from the vantage of an adult. So when it starts off with those early years, I think uh, there, was a, there was quite a vein of creativity that was at work for the author to create that moment of uh, dramatic uh, arrival, uh, so to say, to the author's, uh, to, to, uh, sorry, to the reader's uh, consciousness. And in that method, ladies and gentlemen, you will find the creativity of Namel Veeramuni at work alongside his uh, vein for being a person who documented his life from a, from a point of uh, fact 
from a point of uh, giving facts and uh, experiences, because after all, there can be uh, certain subjectivities involved when you interpret experiences and memories. But to a great extent, you'll find that uh, Namil's approach has been one where he has documented a great amount of uh, facts, I suppose, with the intention of uh, bequeathing that uh, knowledge in terms of fact to future generations, and that's quite important. I wanted to know about Tati's early life uh, and his upbringing. Uh, he has told Aki, Mali, and I plenty of times about, these, um, about his exploits as a young boy, but I did not expect uh, his recollections in this book to be so fully realized, detailed, deeply lyrical, and arrestingly eloquent. What he sketched for us as children about his childhood were mere crude outlines. This book, on the other hand, paints in such vivid, rich tapestries that as I read, I was transported back to see the world through Tati's eyes, a world under British rule, independence, his own tragedies of, tragedies of losing both his parents as a child, of his time being raised up by Buddhist monks, his strong beliefs in equality, his growing educational successes despite the severe difficulties he faced. And Amyan thought these early years and their journeys together of growing acclaim and profound accomplishments despite equally profound struggles and drawbacks. One chapter in particular stood out to me, chapter 46, entitled Building Our Own Residence. It begins, Marlini was the epitome of motherhood. Yes, Thati's right. Thati goes on to talk about how surprised he found the hurdles imposed by schools in admitting students by talking of trying to find my sister a place at, at school, uh, as he so often does in this book, he takes a personal story and draws our perspective back and back much, much further to examine the lessons the larger society stands to learn by promoting strong public education for all. And so removing obstacles to the otherwise talented who cannot thrive in society uh, as they should, because they lack the money or connections or the luck some find often in the simple accident of birth. Tati writes in this chapter, I did not realize how difficult it was to obtain a place at ladies until then. The board of selectors was very strict. A child who sought admission had to have relatives who had past pupils or of the school or had some other strong connections with the school. They did not consider the distance to the school from where one lived, like the requirements that had been set, set down by the education department at the time, which had become a corrupting mechanism today. Fortunately, Marlene has ascertained that for generations, her family had had connections with the school, including a grand aunt who had been a founder teacher plus her father, who was an old boy there as a Montessori kid. I guess that was the practice that has been maintained, perhaps to keep upkeep the good name and reputation of the institution. Yet, I would not endorse this philosophy of education, for it promotes a class system that separately separates conceivably talented children of a society who gives the opportunity may arise to high positions. This type of philosophy of education divides the society into wider groups, like it has created after the introduction of the international schools, where respect for culture, language, and behavioral patterns is lost or ridiculed. Equality of opportunity, which is a fundamental right of a country's children, is denied by this practice. Where is the democracy of education that is the cradle of the foundation of a society? Next in that chapter, Tati goes on to talk of the start of the close community in what was the very beginnings of the building boom we still see in Rajagiriya. He notes that, quote, during our stay at Park Lane without electricity or easy access to water, several houses were built. The peace and quiet 
we had enjoyed till then was lost with the building of new, school, new houses in the area that surrounded us. The house on Park Lane that Tati and Ambi built, I remember fondly. It was a magnificent example of daring and unusual architecture, one that as a child I was blessed to call home, designed to resemble an ocean liner with massive circular windows that looked like portholes and a study that looked like the wheelhouse on top of a ship's deck. It was a joyous, playful space for a little boy like myself, and I dare say a bit of a surprise to the surrounding neighbors. The talented architect was Valentine Gunasekara. He not only took on an interesting and complex design, he also had to negotiate the needs of two clients with a young family on a tight budget who had some, shall I say, unusual solutions to overcome their lack of finances. Tati recalls Valentine's wisdom and good humor. After seeing the piece of land, Valentine agreed to undertake the architectural work and supervision of the construction, and we agreed on a fee for his services. We mentioned that we wished to retain the accommodations that we occupied as an annex attached to the intended main building. Valentine didn't say much, but smiled playfully and said, oh yes, we could. I've never forgot that quiet smile of his. Perhaps he thought, what a couple of innocent folks I have to deal with. When the construction commenced, he suggested that we move out. He suggested that it was impossible for us to stay where we were when the construction work began. Fortune smiled on us, and we heard the Jayawardena family was prepared to go to Australia on an assignment for some years. We offered to rent their house. They agreed. It was a God-sent offer. The construction of our house took almost two years. The annex we had occupied had vanished. While our lives were in the middle of being dominated by the construction of a land-based ship, in this chapter, Tati casually notes he, at the same time, took oaths as an advocate of the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka. And that, did, that he did, so wearing a jacket that was too tight because he had had to borrow it from his friend and president, President's Council, Upali Gunaratna, who still teases Tati by saying, I, Namel, return my jacket. Again, what I love about this book is the way Tati has you as the reader concentrate on a major set of life events, of what seems to be the characters in a novel, when he suddenly reveals another equally extraordinary set of life circumstances and events that were happening to him at the very same time that was completely unexpected. This book is full of such twists and turns, sometimes making me reread sections because I suddenly find myself saying, what, wait, advocate of the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka? Really? Oh my goodness. One other thing I find in this chapter particularly endearing tonight, given our distinguished presider, is that Tati mentions that the day we moved into the Rajagiriya house, we were visited by Dr. Gananatha Obesekara together with two Obesekara kids. Sailed I on life like a lark in the sky. Namilke Virumunike Swanlike the Charita Padane Madakinne Udanya Katiatai. Oge Katru Satan in Market Udrutak Dakwanakamati. I was the dictator of my own life. No one guided me. No one controlled me. No one told me what should, I, what should I do, what should do or aim to be when I grew up. No one told me what was right and wrong. I learned as I went, I did it my way. Me marga sitiyamo se tamai na milviramuni aurdu asu pahak gaman karan. I have lived a full life 
experiencing in intense trials and great joys. My life has not been a burden to anyone around me or the society at large, and that is a consolation and a matter of pride to me. Didas ekolahe di navasi lante di lian na patangat me jivit katav didas name didas dahana me di Sri Lanka ve di avasan kara ad paat ke aatar patte no. Tamange katav kiyavan kene kino ad kauru meka kiyavai ad kiyala liya liya viting vita athar demu me pota naokatavak vage bimanotiya. किया वगैरह नहीं पुलवां ये तरह राष्ट्रवाद लेसे लिया दिए ना ना मेल होने खाता कातंदर कार्य के लिए मटमे पोते की ओन बोटा ये तूने आदिता दिशा नायक के लिरिकल पैरवा देना में पोते टा आपूर्व काउलवा एम ने तम प्रवेश के लिए मांग ही था ना मध्यवर रत्नायक बीबीसी ये तक हिंग राष्ट्रवाल होए प गहनुन मारा वाला दांपु गेवे नक साई तो इडमक गान नगींग वे चाय बैठ दिया अनु नामे बेरुन है ठी एक तरह समझे पानस नामे दी पैरा देने दी नामे मूलीन में रंग पैर रात्रांग हेलोग ही मेलो आवा लंडने रंग देखु है ठी लेस्टर सुमित्रा के मितुरिया लिंसे एंडरसन हमु है ठी लंका वे दी एमजे सिल्वर रोपत्तरे प्रचार एक दिल नालुरियां तोड़ रखूं है ठी नामे मुनिदास सिरितुंग के चरते इटा मुनिदास के आक्का के चरते इटा मालिनी देवर देमला दोस्तर के चरते इटा वासंतराजत मुनिदास के बैना के चरते इटा रेकाब पड़ीपुता चित्तपाल और रंगपै आनंद वीर को उन्हें तोड़ा का थेटी तोड़ा के न कोटा Kira mana kotak, eva itar rasuat kira mana itu na. Tiga kian kotak tawat apur pota kambu na. Vijay Kumar tunga ta madagahan na Times of London patre, sampur na pitu aga pintu reak palagar la. Oh LTT hitawa aji kira luku pravrti aga palagar no. Me pota ta birudhava erehiva nadu pavari mata. Vijay Kumar Tung Hoyagane Enne Naamil Veer Muni. Me Apahasa Eta Viruddhava Rit Pet Samak Koho Gunu Karno. Gunu Karla Vijay Eta Kehino Vijay Me Naduva Ehena Kaale Eta Mang Obata Enna Kiya Anna Ngu Saavi Eta Oba Me Nivaduva Kata Karla Lanka Avate Anna Kiya 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 एक है ना धनुंदेंद विजय कुमार तुमके इतुरु ऐनी ने वो गात ने इतना कोई लाइव बनाई मैं वाके हित काम पा कर रहा हूँ ना तोरो तोरो मैं बोते थी है ना एक दास समझे अनु हाथे लड़ता सारा चंद्र सारा चंद्र सूर्य ने कतुएला मन में ना आते हित निष्पाद ने करना तो उत्साह करात एक सार तक बैठने है � Commonwealth Institute Theatre Hall is going to be able to get the name of the CL Sudan. I'm going to tell you that Dr. Sarachandra is going to be able to get the name of the CL Sudan. I'm going to tell you that the CL Sudan is not the CL Sudan. I'm going to tell you that the CL Sudan is not the CL Sudan. That's why Dr. Sarachandra is going to be able to get the name of the CL Sudan. The CL Sudan is going to be able to get the CL Sudan. Visa ilmu awa naik tekan dia macam tu London itu in, antimu hote visa hambu in nae. Nama el tak kumuk kue no, muka dekaran ni naik tek rangga tak pandu siar le suuda ana, hebei visa nae. Kalau pernah kerana London itu home office kita kehil lah megan ayah cina keran. Eh macam kalau pernah kerana inno kota langkawing telefon panwidya kue no, e lali tertulat muda lagi. Nama itu kata kerana, hana nama itu mana ada keren noni kira. Keren noni beri nama itu kau lihat tienno. Kau mahari visa lagi nama ini nanti pendekan nanti mai nama itu orang kau mesti tienno. Nama itu 
ලලිත මේ ලලිත අතුන් මදලි කතා කරන්නේ ඩොක්ටර් සරත් චන්ද්‍ර ලලිත අතුනත් මුදලිට සඳහන් කරලා තියෙනවා මෙන්න මේ ප්‍රශ්නයක් වෙලා අපිට වීසා නැහැ කියලා ඒ පණිවිඩයේ දැනගෙන තමයි ලලිත අතුරත් මුදලි කතා කරන්නේ නාමෙල්ට ඊළඟට වික්ටෝරියා හෝම් ඔෆිස් එකට නාමෙල් යන්නේ එහෙන් ලැබුණු ටෙලිෆෝන් පණිවිඩයකට නාමෙල්ට පුදුම ගෞරව සම්ප්‍රයුක්ත විදියට කොළඹට යවූ වීසා වේ අනුමත ලිපියක් නාමෙල්ට බාර දෙනවා හෝම් ඔෆිස් සෙකටරි ලලිත අතුරත් මුදලිගේ ඔක්ස්ෆර්ඩ් ක්ලාස්මේට් කෙනෙක බව ඔහු ප්‍රකාශ කරනවා වීසා හම්බ වෙනවා කණ්ඩායම වෙනවා අති උත්කර්ෂ උත්කර්ෂවත් විදිහට මන මේ පෙන්නනවා කිසා ගෝතමී පැරිසියෙන් සෝබෝන් ඉඳලා ලන්ඩනයට එනවා ඇය මන මේ ගායක කණ්ඩායමේ ගී ගායනා කළා කුමාරි අත්තනායකගේ කටහඬ අධික සීතල හින්ද අඩාල වෙලා සිංදු කියන්න බැරි වෙනවා පසුව යශෝදරා සරච්චන්ද මන මේ කුමාරි වෙනවා මොකද කුමාරි අත්තනායකට සිංදු කියා ගන්න බැරි නිසා මන මේ කුමාරි වෙනවා ඇය ගායක වෘන්දේ හිටි නිසා ඇයටත් සියලුම ගීත පාඩම් තිබුණා අතුරු සිතුරු නැතිව මර්මේඩ් රඟහලෙත් කොමන්වෙල්ත් ආයතන රඟහලෙත් මනවේ පෙන්නුම හැටි මේ පොතේ විස්තර වෙනවා